Hi and welcome to another Watt Week video. Today we'll be doing part 2 of the Square G-Shock buying guide that will cover the rest of the lineup, including some rare and slightly different looking squares. If you haven't already, I suggest you check out the first part of this video by clicking on the link in the corner of the screen. We'll start off part 2 with the G-Lite series, which are targeted at surfers and snowboarders. There are three models in this lineup, GLS, GLX and GWX5600. GLS is a regular battery operated model with a world time function, 5 alarms, a 24 hour countdown timer and two 1000 hour stopwatches with one having a pre-start function, where the stopwatch first counts down 5 seconds and then starts measuring, allowing you to precisely time your start. And this model also comes with a low temp LCD that doesn't become sluggish at low temperatures and flash alert where the backlight flashes when the alarm or countdown timer goes off, something that we're used to seeing on the regular DW5600. Next we move on to the GLX5600 which is one of only two squares with moon phase and tide graph data. This is also powered by a regular battery with a claimed life of 7 years. It comes with a world time function, a 24 hour stopwatch with a pre start function, a 24 hour countdown timer with auto repeat, and three alarms. To me, this is one of the most interesting looking squares and one of the best regular battery operated modules. Next, we'll cover the GWX5600, which is the top of the line G Light square as it adds the solar atomic function, meaning it's self charging and self adjusting. It also offers the moon phase and tide graph data together with the usual 5 alarms and world time function. This model also has one of the most interesting countdown timers, as you can specify two sets of countdown timers settable to 99 minutes, with up to 10 auto repeats, making it ideal for interval training. The only downfall of this model is the very short 60 minute stopwatch. And this completes the G Lite series, so back to a more traditional model, the DW D5600, a model that I think Casio planned on using to replace the basic DW5600, but it ended up being produced alongside the regular DW as it didn't turn out to be successful enough to replace it. I find this to be one of the best standard squares as it comes with a world time function, a 24 hour stopwatch with a pre start function, a 24 hour countdown timer, 3 alarms and a 10 year battery life. Not to mention it has one of the clearest screens I have seen on a G-Shock. All this makes it hard to understand why this model isn't more popular. The next model we'll cover is a bit of an oddball and it's the GW5600. This model not only changed the legendary shape, but also the screen layout by losing the ability to display both date and day of the week at the same time, forcing you to choose one or the other. This wasn't the only limitation of this model. Even though it was solar and atomic, the atomic reception worked only in Japan and US, so it could only connect to three of the six world towers. Other functions included a world time function, 24 hour stopwatch, 5 alarms and only a 60 minute countdown timer. This to me at least is one of the worst square models ever, but it has gained a bit of a cult status among collectors and it has its fair share of lovers because of its quirkiness. So it's a true love it or hate it kind of watch. The next three models can be viewed as part of the square lineup, but are so different in looks that one can argue they're standalone models. The first are the King G-Shocks, GX56 and GXW56. When they were introduced, they were the biggest G-Shocks ever made and looked pretty much like a regular square on steroids. I personally love the wacky look of these, despite them being way too big for my wrist. The GX56 is solar only, while the GXW is solar and atomic, so it can connect to one of the six towers and adjust itself. Both come with a world time function, 5 alarms, a 24 hour stopwatch and a 24 hour countdown timer. This model was the first G-Shock to use alpha gel as a shock absorbing material, and it used it generously. I recently got the GXW56, so I will be doing a review sometime in the future. 
the king was not the first oversized square, as that title goes to the 5500 line. This model, or more exactly its vintage predecessor, was worn by Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie Running Man. And it was the first G-Shock to boast sand and mud resistance, as the buttons were covered for additional protection. This can be viewed as the origin of the Mudman and Mudmaster line. The lineup included almost as many models as the regular squares, and they used the same modules, so I won't go into details, as the GLS 5500, for example, is the same as the GLS 5600 that I covered at the beginning. So is the GLX. So naming all the functions would be just me repeating myself. Other models are the same, so just look up a 5600 I covered with the same letters, and you will know all the functions of the 5500. Today, only the GW5510 is still in production, which is a solar and atomic version, and comes with the same module found in the GWM5610 and GW5000, having a 24-hour stopwatch and countdown timer, 5 alarms, and world time function. And now from the big squares, we come on to the slimmest G-Shock ever made, the G056 and GW056, which are better known as Polygon series. These watches were a true engineering feat by Casio, as they had to redesign the whole shock absorbing structure to make a watch with the same shock resistance as regular G-Shocks, but in a slim 11mm thick case. This is one of my favorite G-Shock models, but sadly it was conceived at the dawn of oversized watches trend, which made it a marketing flop, resulting in discontinuation. There are two versions available. The G056 has a regular 5-year battery, while the GW056 is solar atomic, so both self-charging and self-adjusting. The GW comes with both a 60-minute stopwatch and timer, well-time function and 5 alarms, while the regular G056 has a football stopwatch that has the ability to track match time and the lost time during game breaks, making it a true referee watch. It also comes with a well-time function, an alarm, and a countdown timer with preset times for major sports. There's also an interval timer settable up to 60 minutes and up to 9 different sets, with an auto-repeat function, making it ideal for workouts. This referee-specified function brings us to the last square we'll cover, the DW56RT, where RT stands for referee timer. This watch has exactly the same functions as the G056, but in a more traditional square case and with a different screen layout. I find it to be one of the coolest looking squares out there, and it's also one of the rarest. Well, this completes part 2 and the whole square lineup. In case I missed any, let me know in the comment section. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe, and until the next video, bye.